Yoo-hoo. It's the time for Becky from China. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the PlayStation 2 Slim model. I personally grew up and had the fat model most of the time when having a PlayStation 2. But let me know in the comments which model did you own. The Slim model is absolutely a slim model. It's super tiny compared with the old school beast. But there are some things you need to know before we're going to take a close look at, let's say, playing some games on it. Because there are some ways to modify it when it comes to the soft mod, but sadly, not all the options are available for the slim model. So nowadays, we can like unlock your PlayStation with a soft mod like a plug and play solution. No soldering or a much up is needed. The free Mac booth is absolutely a great way, but there are some things that you need to know when it comes to this software. So to begin with, there are all kinds of versions out there. But when you're looking at the free movie booth, sometimes it is possible that this software doesn't work on your PlayStation. Slim, yeah, there are a couple of versions out there from the Slim that don't have the compatibility with these devices. And there's a little bit of a bummer. Here we do have one for a USB solution. And then we're going to get ourselves like an other free mug booth. It's basically like an older edition, but this version. This is the version that we're going to need if you do have a problem. This is basically... Wait. This is basically... Ah, there we go. The special edition, the Fortuna for Slim console. Already says it. So if you have some issues, but I understand of the situation that you need to use this particular model, this will unlock every single PlayStation 2 Slim. But take it a little bit with a grain of salt, because when you're looking at this model, it's still possible that some of the devices still have some issues. But this is basically the best shot that you're going to have when you're looking at the free mode booth on a PlayStation 2 Slim. I think what was the 90,000 models that had an issue with this and also the PlayStation 2 television had the same issues. So when it comes to the PlayStation 2 Slim, we have so many freaking ways to play. So to begin with, one of those ways is basically you can use yourself like an external hard drive. That is one of the ways you can go. So for example, we do have like a two terabyte edition that you can use, plug and play. And of course, what we're going to need is the... <laughs> I already shown you like this is the usb game so basically in this kit gives you the option to load up game through an usb hard drive but the downside to this is it is so freaking slow and it will have some issues sometimes so it doesn't be a little bit of a mixed experience when it comes to this but it is one of the ways but that was not the reason why you clicked on this video but of course we also had the option to use just a usb stick with the free Mac booth for usb games but again like this is one of those options you can play and now finally we do have like, when I say the ultimate solution, but this is just a big improvement, especially when it comes to slim models. So basically this is the kit that we're going to talk about today. And I think this is one of the better ways to play your games on your PlayStation 2 Slim. So first of all, we're going to get the kit, the SD card itself, of course. Then we're going to get ourselves the MX4 SEO, the free Mac booth, the memory card for unlocking and getting the software. And then I'm going to get, of course, let's do a quick unboxing. Here we're going to get ourselves the memory card. They're selling it in all kinds of colors. Most of them are like translucent, pretty damn cool. And here, because you like this translucent red. So it's pretty damn awesome to see this, but there are some other things that you need to know. Talk about the SD cards. So we're going to get ourselves the Class 10 SD card. I have chosen also for the 32 gigabyte, but if you have an option, you can always choose different versions. We do have like the 64 gigabyte, but we're also going to get ourselves the 128 gigabyte. But which one should you pick? So I think it's more depending like how many games you want to install on your SD card. To begin with, if you have a 128 gigabyte, I think you're going to like store a lot of games. The consideration which version you're going to like basically rip and put it here on here. Because if you have like a normal version, like a CD version, it's going to be around like 600, maybe a little bit bigger. But when you're having like a DVD version, we can go up to a couple of gigabytes. So if you're going to slap a lot of games on it, and let's say 32 gigabyte will not store a lot of games. So that is something you need to choose for yourself. But how to add games? That is quite simple. We need a card reader or some kind of device that we can basically plug in the SD card. So what we're going to do is plug this bad boy in and we're going to use ourselves the PC. And let's plug it in the USB port or our PC. And okay, let's plug it in and let's go. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is get ourselves the image burner program for making an image from our original game. And that's what we need to do. The next thing we don't need is this special program anymore because we're not using a hard drive. So we don't need like special partition transferring program. Nope, just make an image and that's the only thing that we need to do. So the thing that we're going to do is grab ourselves the game itself, get yourself a PC with this drive or in this case a DVD drive. And let's plug in the game and let's make ourselves an image file. 
So with this program, we can do a lot of great stuff, but the only thing that we're going to need is get ourselves a disk image from an original disk. So that is the option we're going to choose. So that's what we're going to do. We need to choose the location. We need to give, of course, the ISO file a name. So in this case, I just use Data Live 2, for example. So we're going to give this thing the name called Data Live 2. All right, so let's save it over here. And yeah, the only thing I would recommend, like always, like if you want to make an ISO file, is like, don't use the fossil speed, give it some time. And when this file is ready, we are ready to put it on the SD card. Depending on the size and the speed, it can take up a lot of time, but I just didn't quit cut here over there. It's like long live with editing. But here you can see everything is complete. There are no errors whatsoever. So let's close the window. We have saved our file on the PC and that is what we're going to use now. So this file is going to drag and drop it on the SD card. We don't need this program anymore. There are some other programs you can use. Here we can see like we do have uh, different folders so everything has been set up you can drag and drop it into the SD card if you want to there are some special programs I will make like an extended tutorial if you want to so if you want to use like some custom artwork stuff like that but again if you just want to slap it in here for me it worked out very well so but here you can see like there are a lot of files preset over here but that's the stuff that you don't need to do if you don't care about it you just want to have a list you want to slap in your files and just want to show you the file size this thing has a FAT32 so if you want to get yourself another SD card just make it FAT32 get yourself an SD card that is very fast and it works just fine but what I understand of if you do have an issue with the places too slim with a certain model I think the one of those options are again Fortuna for MX4 SEO yep they made a memory card especially for the system what I understand of the situation here so the label is a little bit crooked to be nitpicky about it but basically what you're going to get is a 64 megabyte memory card the only downside i find with these like you don't have this magic gate technology stuff so you do have some issues when it comes to saving so the best thing is like making a backup to an original memory card but that's something that i read and i would say that i did notice it when it comes to this memory card that it did have some issues with the saving and that can be maybe a solution so yeah that's basically what we're going to get with it but how does it work? It's very simple. You plug in the free Mac booth for the MX4 SEO. Has been set for you. Then we're going to plug in the memory card for the SD adapter. And then we're going to plug in the SD card upside down. That's it. You click it in and you're ready to go. So let's take a close look. Let's boot it up. And we're not going to use the disk drive anymore. And let's have some fun. And when the system has been booted up, we are ready to go. And what do we mean ready to go? We're going to get ourselves the softmap menu where we do have a lot of new options when you compare this with the original browser. When booted up, we're going to get a similar menu only extended when you're looking at the configuration options. Here we're going to get browser, system configuration, the U launch elf, the open PlayStation loader. Basically, this is the old and the new version, but we're going to need this version for, of course, the SD functionality, HD loader, so other applications that we have seen before with some other Mac free booth. And then we're going to get ourselves some emulators that we do go and take a look at in a different video. Let's boot up this program and let's load up some games. So I think in a couple of seconds we'll boot up the menu. Here at the bottom row you can see like we do have some more options. So it's pretty damn awesome that you just can load up through a USB stick. But that's something we're going to look at later on. So pressing X it will load up the list we have added to the memory card. So yeah 128 gigabyte it's still a lot of let's say storage capacity. but you will not like store like maybe like hundreds of different games you would need to have a bigger capacity card but let's boot it up and let's see what we're going to get when it comes to performance okay so the first game that we're going to try out is some burnout number three and uh, yeah let's see how this thing will run but okay so let's take a close look at the mx4 seo so when you're playing a game you can see over there like the led is blinking and it means like it's reading data so there i have noticed with mine version the led the green one doesn't boot up a little bit of a bummer so that's more like a technical error but yeah normally we do have like a green led over here that basically turns on when you're powering on the system so you know the memory card is active but it doesn't work with mine of course all right so let's see how the gameplay of the game is take consideration you always need to double check which game is the best compatibility because there is not like 100 compatibility with every single game at the moment it's still a work in progress but i understand of as i'm making this video and sometimes that also happens yeah that's the thing that i was waiting for <clears throat>
Okay, so let's take a close look at the settings of the game itself. When you're basically having the game selected, press triangle. Here we're going to get in the special menu. Here we're having like also the cheat settings, but here we're going to go into the game setting, pressing the cross. And here we do have like the mode settings. So what is possible with some of the games? And there's a big list out there. I also have the same issue when I'm putting in hard drive inside of PlayStation 2 Fed. You need to mess around with the settings if you have some issues with the game. Sometimes just like a compatibility issue at the moment, but sometimes you can fix it by basically messing around with the modes. But there's a big list out there and people in the community who will find out how some of the games that have issues that can run perfectly later on. But we're not going to give up. So let's try another game and just to show you like that not everything runs like crap. All right, so next up, let's try a little bit of a fighting game and it will run just fine without any hassle whatsoever. Okay, so let's try another game. Let's see how that game will run. Okay, so what I've noticed, like every single freaking game you boot up, it will like jabber and like ask you like freaking this memory card because the memory card isn't supported or there is not enough space. In the end, you need to freaking press continue with every single game. It's a little bit of a bummer. All right, so next up, you can see like this three-dimensional racing game has no issues whatsoever. So it's really like the question like which game you're going to play. So I recommend like going online, checking out which games will be supported by this freaking game system. Otherwise you can be disappointed if your favorite game doesn't work. All right, so I just wanted to point out that I did not give you the full experience because I couldn't let you hear the audio at the background, but I did notice that there were some stuttering here and there. So it's not flawless, but the gameplay itself is just fine. Such a fun game playing this. Oh yeah, Nitro mode. And the funny thing is you can play this game together with a friend. So basically one can drive, the other one can shoot. Oh yeah. But when you're looking at the MX4 SEO for the PlayStation 2 Slim Edition, I think it's still a very cool way to play. Loading times are not like extremely fast or something like that. They're like faster than the USB method. Maybe in the future, if you want to, I can make like a side-by-side -side comparison when it comes to loading speeds. But for now, I just want to give you a look at what you're going to get with this, let's say, really cool piece of technology. It's freaking awesome they can now like load up your games this way because when you're like looking at the slim you were limited to the network functionality the usb and of course now we're having this and this brings this thing to the next level if you ask me let me know in the comments what you think of this want to thank you for watching consider subscribing hit that little bell become the wicked family and i will see you in the next video